So I like him having to like refurbish a lamp because I was at one of my friend's house and their dog like knocked their lamp on the ground and it just fucking shattered. And then they're like, oh, okay, I'll throw this out. And I don't know why, but I'm still like the old man who's like, no, just give it to me. I'll fix that bad boy up in no time. He'll be fine. And I was trying to fix it up and I was making like this cool Halloween-y gothic lamp. And I went to Hobby Lobby and fun fact, you cannot find skulls in a Hobby Lobby. I was looking everywhere. You were, you're literally two months away from Halloween. Just wait for two weeks. <laughs> well, that's what I thought. I was like, cause they had autumn stuff out and they had like Halloweeny stuff out. And I was just like, ma'am, where can I find a human skull? You have, you have longhorn skulls. You have this kind of skull. Where's the human skull? You can find Am it right? at literally every Halloween shop that ever exists. They only exist for a month, though, so get it quick. This is my new com this is my new comedy routine. What's <laughs> the deal with Hobby Lobby? They've they've got all kinds of skulls, longhorns, cows. Where are all the humans? Look, I just wanted some mutilated organs, but Hobby Lobby <laughs> didn't have any. Oh, it's like the time I went to a went to went to a Sears and asked them how many body how many bodies this fridge could hold. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, how long does it take for this dryer to kill a man? <laughs> Whoa! Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, it's time. It's time. It's time for a load. Oh, I said a wee load. A load of BS. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, a load of BS. The greatest ship that ever sailed. Featuring the two best captains in the world. And I am talking about he, the T, to the IBBS. That's right. It's me partner in crime, Captain Tim. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> Captain Tibbs. Captain Tibbs represent. <clears throat> that's right, and it's Pirate Day here at the it's Lord of Day, apparently. Thanks, Long John Scottsford. Well, I had to intro... Well, the thing is, everyone's going to be confused with this new studio setup I have. I, it, looks, it looks a lot better, but I also have a pirate ship. I have Sergeant Admiral Poopsy guarding my treasure. I also have a merch plug for the website here. Oh shit, Blake is left. I think he's going to he's going to find a certain captain. Oh, and there he wait. <laughs> I thought you were getting I thought you were getting the Tibbs captain hat. But no. You got like Bob Marley going you're like Lil Yachty going on the Pirates of the Caribbean. Hey, Jesus. man, my name is Captain Jack. Hey, man, my name is Captain, Captain Jack Sparrow, man. The number one pirate in all of Uganda. <laughs> hey, you have heard of me. <laughs> the end. That's it. No, you, you have you heard have. of me. I am pirate. I'm also Russian now, apparently. This hat is very old. Yeah? What are the origins of the hat? Bought it at Pirates of the Caribbean. Oh, fuck yeah! I still need to buy an official pirate's hat, because this is definitely a scarf I got from Rue 21, and a very old pirate hat I've had for a long time, but I have used it for every Jack Sparrow <laughs> cosplay I've ever done. As a matter of fact, this hat might be older than the, uh, when they actually refurbished Pirates of the Caribbean to include the Jack Sparrow, uh... Oh, dude. wow. The Jack Sparrow. How dare you, sir? I'm not just a dude. The Jack Sparrow. I'm a, I'm a captain. <laughs> I'm a captain, dude. You will refer to me by my full title. Captain Dude Jack Sparrow. The Captain Dude abides. The Captain Dude. Captain. No. I was about to try a Jeff Bridges impression, and I swear <laughs> to God, Kermit the Frog started to come out. <laughs> hey, guys, it's me, Jeff Bridges, star of Tron. Hi, ho. Jeff Bridges starved 
Tron. <laughs> Is it bad? That was the first one to come to mind. <laughs> Seeing as I just made a reference to the Big Lebowski, yes! <laughs> and I was just like, well, what's, Jeff, what's a good Jeff Bridges movie? Oh, Tron. <laughs> Star of Tron oh. Absolution. Nope, that's not what the sequel is called. Oh, <laughs> fuck. Are you Wait, Jeff Bridges, Star of Tron, of Tron, Tron Infinity, Tron of Vengeance, <laughs> Tron Revolution. Welcome to the Tron Cinematic Universe, everybody. The Tron Cinematic Universe. Have you ever actually played Tron? I got to go to uh, I got to go to Disney Quest like before it closed. Like this was the last thing I did before I left Flor before I left Florida, and uh, they have Tron there, and I tried playing it, and it's the worst thing I've ever played in my life. <laughs> so. What are the game me mechanics for Tron like? I have no fucking clue. That's <laughs> why it's so bad. I was just like, all right, let's play this. Nope. No clue. I turned this, I think. I pressed that. No. No idea. <laughs> and I don't know if it was Tron that was fucked up or just this particular Tron at Disney Springs. <laughs> because uh, most Disney Quest games were a little fucked. Just saying. <laughs> Yeah, those kids really got into those bad boys. <laughs> That's why I felt so bad, because I was with one of my friends, and she's like, this place is amazing, look at all this stuff! And I'm like, it's all fucked. It's all bad, I'm sorry, look at I this don't stuff. care. Isn't it fucked? <laughs> look at this stuff, isn't it shit? Wouldn't you think maybe a joystick would maybe make you turn left when you fucking turned left? <laughs> But oh uh, no, look where you go. You stay in place while they shoot you and go. <laughs> Wouldn't you think um, maybe they'd fix this fucking machine? So we were in um, Panama City when we went a couple months ago. Yeah. And uh, we went to the Dave and Buster's there, which is a pretty new Dave and Buster's, honestly. Like, if you remember, it wasn't there oh, when we yeah. went years ago. I actually just now remembered that that Dave and Buster's existed. <laughs> so they have a they have a Luigi's Mansion like, you know, one of those cabinet games where you get in it and there's like a fucking curtain. Oh you yeah, pull that curtain don't you shoot like... like ping pongs to fight ghosts? Or is that the Ghostbusters? Kind game? of. Well, no, it's the same mechanics as actual Luigi's Mansion. In like, you have to shine your light on the ghosts and then yeah. like suck them up. Right. Um. I don't know who the fuck has been playing that game. Yeah. But they have severely messed with the vacuums. <laughs> <laughs> to the point where... Like, to the point where the vacuums don't correctly motion control. And oh. to the fact where it's like, if this was a real vacuum, it wouldn't have any ghost-sucking potential at all. I'm sorry. Just like... The <laughs> The structural integrity of this vacuum has been compromised. Guys, let's be honest here. This vacuum's a little bit fucked. No ghost sucking's <laughs> gotta come out of this bad boy. You're gonna want a brand new one straight from me, Carl Ghost yeah. Hunter. I'm here with the highest line of the best vacuums you can buy. Let me tell you something right now, guys. <laughs> Reusable bags, Hi. disposable, I got them all. Hey, hey, listen here. Listen, you you can listen to this wind back selling uh selling ghost vacuums all day. But if you want a a premium ghost sucking machine, you come to Mr. T Thunder Ghost Sucker. Oh my god, is Thunderbird branched out? Thunderbird is now Thunderbird. He's now a ghost. Thunderbird hunter. is now Ever since uh ever since his segment failed on the show. Uh <laughs> He's Ever since we decided to kill him off as a character, he is he's now hunting his own ghost. But now I have to hunt the ghosts of my past. As well as your ghost that you're hunting as well. Like, all, wait, of my, all of my vacuum cleaners suck up straight into a ghost dimension. A dimension where ghosts inhabit. So you, for you there's no must, no fuss, no coconuts. Ah, okay. I like I like this. I like this. Now, uh, so you're saying 
there's no like bags that you have to hold it it just immediately sucks it up now how does that work is there a portal inside or dimensional bullshit i don't know i have scientists for that <laughs> hey it. professor e professor e Gad, you come in here you tell him oh zasuka suka yabba yabba yeah <laughs> Okay, this on. really this, this doesn't make any scene. sense if you've never played Luigi's Mansion. Oh, okay. I honestly thought you were going full on, um, oh god, what's his name? From fucking Star Wars Episode 1. <laughs> 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 my little buddy Wano here has got all the best technology. <laughs> Hello, my friends! <laughs> I bring you ghosts and the gear! <laughs> Ah, well, uh, well, uh, why don't you give him the budget option? Yeah. All right, let me give you all the budget options <laughs> for all of these beautiful vacuums. This is the $500 Premier Vacuum Sucker, as the portal takes away all of the ghosts to another dimension. Also, it'll suck your dick. Just saying, <laughs> it's amazing, my guy. This, why is see, this? for someone like you, my friend, this is like a $50 option. It's a, it's a hand, oh. it's a handheld vacuum. You do have to change the bag. It's a, it's not reusable. It is a disposable bag, so you have to come back to me while the ghost hunter to display it for you every day. And this, this is a Dyson. It's $10. <laughs> it was my mother's. She's dead now, and I give it unto you. Maybe you can find her ghost with it. Fuck you. I'm Wado, the ghost hunter. Uh, that was Wado. Ghost hunter, slave owner. <laughs> I say, hold on, we, hey, we don't talk about that other thing, man. <laughs> don't bring that up. That's not a big deal. Look, uh, that child was going to be a dick, and you know it. I was just keeping him in check. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. He would try to get on to me. He'd be like, hey, man. Hey, man, I want to... <laughs> He'd be like, hey, man, I want to go out. And I'm like, no, too bad. And he'd try to step up to me. But the beauty is I have wings. So no matter what, I was like, you'll never <laughs> win, Anakin. I have the high ground. <laughs> <laughs> I have the high ground. <laughs> so that's where Anakin Skywalker's fear of the high ground came exactly. from. <laughs> exactly. It was all me. All me, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so we have, we all have Watto to thank for Darth Vader. <laughs> exactly, it was my problem, guys. Sorry about that. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> you, I would, no, Darth Vader would exist no matter what. But because of my existence, he's now sliced in half and part a robot. So you have me to thank for the fact that he's now a terrifying cyborg of death. <laughs> where, where the fuck did this go? <laughs> Look, I'm just describing at? a very simple scenario wherein I owned a slave and trained him to grow up and be more machine than man now. Twisted and it's evil. evil. Uh, <laughs> Jesus Christ. We started just talking about fucking theme parks. No, no, no. We started talking about ghosts. And it obviously led into a discussion about the slave trade. <laughs> And also all the racist stereotypes <laughs> in the Star Wars prequels. Misa not a stereotype. Misa just a piece of shit. <laughs> oh, oh, and uh, who are you uh, calling a stereotype? Who are you calling a stereotype? God, there were a lot, weren't they? I just purposely... <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I don't watch them just because they're bad. I don't want... Now, now that I look back, I'm like, hmm, was some racist shit in there, wasn't there? Yes, there mm -hmm. was, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's a lot of that. Uh... And also the fact that, like, all of the racist stereotypes in the original Star, like, a Star Wars Episode One, rather. Yeah. They were just like they were either the bad guys, or a bad guy, or a complete fucking imbecile. What do you sound? Miss a secretly Kylo Ren. No one will ever admit it. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> no, no, Misa, 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 command, Misa, leader Snoke. What's his name? Misa Snoke. Misa, Misa Snoke, Snoke. Take care of all of you. He's hey. a fucking Jedi. I, I turned him Irish at the end. Pretty fucking Jedi. 
Charger your Binks. Oh, me said Darth Jar Jar. Jar Turn Jar -Jar. around. Every now and then I get a little bit lonely and you never come around. Turn around. Every now and then I get a little bit tired of listening to the sound. Like I'm trying to get you to talk about the total eclipse of the sun right now. It is just not Turn working. Turn around, John. And I need John. you now tonight. And I need you okay. more than ever. And if you only hold me tight, Blake, fucking talk about your adventure. <laughs> I can only I'm say sorry. Total Eclipse of the Heart for, for this so long. segue to end. There's so much segue going on that I don't know what's, what's reality anymore. I saw it the ain't sun. No joke. You know, it's like, no, 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 stop it. Oh, you, you spent so much time trying to get me to talk. <laughs> Oh, uh, okay. Yes, I saw the eclipse. It was an amazing feat of wondrousness that I'm pretty sure the cosmos deigned perfect for me to see because there were a lot of clouds. Yeah. Um, Scotty, I don't know if you know this, but a lot of weird shit happens when an eclipse happens. Yeah. Like, so much so that I completely understand why, um... A lot of old Native American, South American um, civilizations were like, holy fucking shit, the sun is gone. We have to sacrifice somebody right fucking now or it's going to go away forever. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, that's what being in an eclipse is like, by the way. I almost killed one of my best friends just to make <laughs> it come back. You know, Hagen hasn't posted much recently on Facebook. Um, do you have something <laughs> to say? <laughs> No, it's okay. We all decided that, like, all of Michael's extended friends that none of us knew, they were easier targets. <laughs> um, um, yeah, you guys actually, like, went on an adventure. I drove for almost six hours to get to totality. Holy shit, when really? Nashville, Where'd you guys Tennessee... end up at? Yeah, Nashville, Tennessee. <laughs> hey, damn uh, right. We were actually a little bit... Yeah, boy. We were a little bit east of Nashville in a park called Cedar Creek. Um, okay. We went to one of the state parks first, and it was so fucking crowded that you couldn't even get your big toe in. So we went to one of our secondary locations, and it was almost empty. Oh, wow. It was on the river. It was nice. There's some cool people there. There was a dude that made his own camera lens that could take pictures of the eclipse. Still waiting for those pictures, by the way, Sam. Um, just letting you know. <laughs> Sam, if you're listening right now, fuck you. Get the pictures. I don't know if his name was Sam. Um. Well, in case you, <laughs> while you while you were on a fucking like adventure quest to quest up to Tennessee and uh, and oh, do no, all we that, we went to adventure quest too. We got our wands and stuff. We played through the whole thing. <laughs> Very fun. I fucking love adventure quests. That being said. Um, meanwhile, I was at home editing stuff for the PS YouTube channel, looked out the window, went, oh, it's dark. Oh, shit, that's happening. Then I went, oh, no, I don't have glasses. Ran outside. My dad's like, hey, just use your phone. You know, look this back. <laughs> use your phone to look behind you. And I don't know if you've ever done that, Blake, but if you look down, all you see is a bright ass sun behind you. It don't matter. Oh, no, yeah, because you know what? You know. There's a special thing that you didn't get, Scotty, because you were yeah. too far away, and that's called total totality. To 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 totality. <laughs> to 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 oh, totality. Uh, total totality. So something that's about where it's being basically in... the ring in the sky of darkness. Yeah, the the ring in the sky kept on turning. Yes, yeah. <laughs> that ring. No, we can't keep <laughs> singing. My personal favorite text I got during that day, though, was one of my friends just sent me a... Like, I was editing something, because at this point, I'd resigned myself to, I'm not going to see the eclipse. Fuck it. Next one's like 2024, I think. We'll be fine. Look down at my phone, and someone has just sent me in all caps, Why the fuck is it so dark? I'm like, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't know. I think the sun yeah. fucked up. And the best thing was, it only got, like, marginally darker where you were. Yeah. Um, I went from 
it was full fucking daylight to, oh, it's 8 o'clock at night now. There's a <laughs> sunset everywhere. Everywhere you looked, there was sunset. Um, that sounds awesome. It was actually very nice. I wish I could have gotten a panoramic, but it only lasted two minutes. And I figured out that I can't take panoramics for shit. Now, you say, you did say that during the eclipse, certain very strange things happen. And I believe, Blake Tanner, on this, the day of the eclipse, you returned home and found just uh, a sea of a certain type of beverage in your home. Can you explain <laughs> this to me? I didn't find it at home. I would just like to say that the eclipse happened and it was behind me, as if it was welcoming me to take part in it. And I would just like to say, I got a bunch of Mountain Dew Live Wire because they don't <laughs> sell it where I live. <laughs> Oh, you think the podcasting audience at this point is not aware of the fact that you're a psychopath and you will do whatever it takes to get live wire? I, I killed three men to get this live wire. Of course I know that. Let me put it this way, Blake. We're going to see uh, so probably our biggest podcasting influences, the McElroy brothers, in a few, a few months. And they're going to be in Tennessee, in Nashville. And I'm afraid we're not going to be able to wait around after the show to, like, meet them or anything. Because you're going to be like, Scotty, look, the Walmart. I don't know if the Walmart closes, but if the Walmart closes, we have to get to the Walmart and get the live wire. People are getting the live wire, Scotty. I'm like, fuck, okay, fine. Oh, Scotty, 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 Walmarts don't close. <laughs> <laughs> the beauty of Walmart. Let me tell you something I've learned in these many years on the earth. The Walmarts never close. They never leave, boy. I am the Walmart. <laughs> I am the Walmart. Oh, and you know what else never leaves, ladies and gentlemen? Merch.aloadofpurebs.com. And um, you're gonna do this ad break, and I'll be right back. I promise. Wait, are you legit about to just go to the bathroom in the middle of a merch plug? Cool. Awesome. Ad breaks. I love it. <laughs> You've got this. I know. I know you've got this, Scotty. I believe in you. Okay. Be right back. Hello, my friends. I, uh, unfortunately, Scotty has left as well. So they have both went to use the restroom. So it is up to me now to tell you about merch.aloadofpurebs.com, ladies and gentlemen. I know you listen to the BS boys. You listen to a load of BS. You watch their YouTubes. You do all of the good things. Well, if you want to take it a step further, if you want to take your relationship and get intimate, if you want to be inside the BS boys, go to merch.aloadofpurebs.com. You can get merchandise for the Fight Boys podcast, for the Quizzle Corp podcast. You can get for all the great BS Network podcasts, including shirts for a load of BS, including the official... A load of BS Invader Zim shirt. It just recently went on clearance, ladies and gentlemen. In addition to that, we have the Rising Sun shirt available. It's this month's fantastic shirt. You will all love it. I, I guarantee you this. It's great. It, it's as great as raising a slave child to become a, a fucking fighting robot. Now, Blake is, Blake is not back from his piss break. This is not ideal. I don't, I don't like this. Hello? Hello, my sweet boy? I've been here for so long. <laughs> I've been waiting oh. on you for oh so long. Oh my god. I, d I, thought I, just, I thought I was just gone for a few minutes. How, what year is it? It's been years. Oh my uh, god, Scotty? <laughs> my friend, your withered bones. You're I'm, just literal I'm bones. Go I'm gone. I'm defeated. Um, so, so the other day I was flipping through Netflix and, um, I think I've went on this rant to you before and I came upon a fancy little movie known as Fantastic Beasts and, and Where to Find Them, How to Catch Them All, Beast Movie. <laughs> Gotta catch them beast. Gotta catch those beasts and Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. And, uh, here's the thing, Blake Tanner, I was raised, uh, to be a very adventurous child. I was raised to enjoy the unicorns, and the Loch Ness monsters. And uh, guess what? None of those motherfuckers are apparently fantastic enough for Miss J.K. Rowling. 
She's like, I'm gonna make up new things. I'm gonna make a fist fucker. This is what all you kids like nowadays. This okay. is a slammer jammer. And I'm like, no. Fake animals gonna, already exist, JK. I'm gonna preface this with the fact that a lot of the stuff in JK Rowling's like Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, the original book, yeah. we're real fictional creatures. This conversation so, has already gotten confusing. They like, were real fictional I mean, characters. They, they had a lot like of mythos that she pulled them from. And it's just like, honestly, if you don't, just because you don't know anything more than unicorns and Loch Ness monsters might say a little bit to you, but I'm not judging. Hey, don't you start with me. Zoo <laughs> zoo cryptozoology is my shit, which is why I'm here, Blake Tanner, to pitch to you the better fantastic beasts and where to find them. Now, here's where I'm thinking we go with this. We need, I do like the fancy British man yeah. and Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, uh, of Dan, Dan, Daniel, uh, Mudvayne, um, yeah. and so Danny Mudvayne is still gonna be in the movie, but he's not our lead. Dan, our lead, Dumbledore. Dumbledore? Yeah, Dumbledore, Dumbledore. Mudvayne. Dumbledore, Mudvayne, he's not our lead, but he does come in eventually. Now, our lead is, um, you know what? I was gonna say, like Danny DeVito. No, it's Danny DeVito. And Danny DeVito... Oh. Danny DeVito Danny happens Trejo. to... Danny hey, Trejo's in there as we well. Have... Danny Trejo's in there like as well. A... He's a gardener. But he's like a badass gardener. Yeah, he turns out to be like the actual monster hunter. And like, he's got a lot of monsters on his on his wall. And he's oh, like, shit. yeah. Oh, shit. That's dope as shit. Okay, okay. So, let me get into plot. So, Danny, uh, the first scene we have, Danny DeVito is at a, uh, is at a, like, radio station. And he's doing a radio, like, interview, advertising the big Nessie reveal this weekend at his crypto zoo. The only crypto zoo in the world. It's the only zoo where you can find unicorns, Loch Ness monsters, all this amazing stuff. Uh, Scotty, I know. Can I just it's interject in here? Yeah. This is already a pitch that you made sometime earlier in this podcast's history. No, I've only made it to you. I have saved it for the podcast. I can guarantee <laughs> that. So, Danny DeVito has a Loch Ness monster. Uh, cut to the big day. And everything's going amazing. Everything's awesome. All the people are coming out. He's making uh, fat stacks of cash. And that's the thing about him. He likes making money. He's a big greasy guy. When all of a sudden, uh, Dumb Dumble Dan Redvane shows up. <laughs> and he's just like walking over to all the animals. Like he walks over to the unicorn and he's just like, hmm. Grabs it, takes the horn, pulls it off. It's a fake horn. At which point the crowd's like, what? Oh my God. At which point Danny DeVito runs out and is just like, oh, what? Those, no, what if, What are you doing to my animals? And then he walks over to, like, a, a, a phoenix he has. And, oh, no, the phoenix would be hard to fake, wouldn't it? A phoenix, <laughs> he's, he's unless just you just set that fire. motherfucker on fire. <laughs> he's just set a fucking bird on fire. <laughs> no, oh. no, this is how he does it. It's constantly setting itself on fire, dying, and then resurrecting. Turns out there's a cage of birds underneath that he's constantly sending out and igniting on fire. It's like the prestige, <laughs> but with birds. Well, that's better. At least it's you the... don't have the main character who's committing bird arson. It's the prestige, but with birds. So he's got a field of birds that he's constantly growing. And uh, uh, Dumbledan Redvane reveals this. And the crowd's like, oh my god, but then the big turn is when he goes out to the lake where Nessie finally arises. The whole crowd's gathered around. They're like, oh my god, Nessie, she's there, she's there. And then Dumbledan Redvane takes a uh, takes out a he's got very long flowing hair that he's put back into a hair uh, like into a So he takes out a harpoon. <laughs> no, Jesus, Blake. He takes out a he has his hair up back and like a ponytail. No, a man bun, because he's a fucking man. Takes it down. Pulls it, flicks it, it hits the Nessie, leans over, it's just been cardboard the whole time. Danny DeVito's shit is okay, ruined. Okay, so he hits it with a hairpoon. 
A harpoon. Oh god, harpoon sounds like the worst sent words you've ever come up. <laughs> oh, you know Jesus. how they're like cellar door is the most beautiful combination of words in the English language? Harpoon is the worst. <laughs> you created the worst. I would but, argue against cellar door being the best, but okay. It's just a phrase. I saw Donnie Darko once, okay? <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, so did I. It's so, um... Gather any because it was so confusing, but I saw it. I saw it, and I know that cellar door is the most beautiful world and word in the English language, other than hair. Uh. Um, okay, so he, his career is ruined. And, um, by the way, this whole time you're kind of getting backstory. Well, no, not at the... Yeah, you, no, you're not getting backstory yet. But I will reveal the backstory at this point, which is from the age of, like, 0 to 18, all Danny DeVito wanted to be was a legitimate... And, like cryptozoologist he was livid and the reason he was inspired was at age five he and his father went hunting and he found a chupacabra but like no one believed him he's like i saw a chupacabra i saw a chupacabra and they're like no you didn't and <laughs> you, did, you little shit shut up no, danny you didn't. fuck you this is when he was hunting with his dad but his dad never believed him and it was just like a harsh thing in his life um then cut to double dan red vein who now is just setting up shop in the middle of the crypto zoo. He opens up his briefcase, and I believe if uh, the two commercials I've seen for Fantastic Dudes and how to buy them, um, <laughs> he keeps animals in his case. So yeah, like a real like baby unicorn pops out, and at this point, Devito is like, "Holy shit, what?" And um, he goes, "Yes, I collect these, and what you've been doing is horrifying." You're glorifying me, people. <laughs> so, I collect these. I collect these amazing, fantastical creatures and keep them in this one single briefcase. But what you've been doing is horrifying, sir. I also Good like day. the fact that he doesn't have like a classy accent. He's got like the worst British accent. Hello, sir. It's me, Dumble Dad Red Vane. And I'm here to teach you Hello, I am things Dumble Dan, today. Dumble Dan, and I keep mystical magical creatures in horrific conditions in the same briefcase. Well, I don't think he keeps them all there, but he's just like, hey, I find them if they've kind of run out into your world, and I take them back to the fancy wizard world. Because he is a wizard. each other in the case. Oh, you hear that? I'm a fucking wizard. It's a wizard. nice. Yeah. Hey, I kept a dragon in here once. <laughs> Killed everything. Dragon in here. And so uh, he invites Danny DeVito because he knows of DeVito's past on an adventure to go capture animals. And they do. And um, basically, DeVito starts putting the real mythical creatures in his zoo, which at first, Dumble Dan has a problem with it. But then he's just like, well, I don't know. The humans are treating them with care. They do deserve to be seen, I guess. This is kind of good to let them out. And so um, that goes on for a while. Until, um, I don't know how, there is going to be some sort of secondary plot involving the gardener, Danny DeVito, or Danny Trejo. <laughs> but Danny Trejo, the gardener, hunts hunts them. Um but at one point, all of the animals get loose, and there's this huge riot, and they, like, I don't know if they want to kill people. That's the problem. You know what? Fuck it. They kill a few people. You know? It's fine. No big deal. Hey. Yeah, after the seventh Harry Potter movie, is like, yeah, we can kill people now. We can kill a few people at this point. It's fine. This isn't <laughs> Blake Tanner. This is not the world of Harry Potter. This is the world of, um, uh, oh, shit. What should we call it? This is the world of PG-13, bad boys. PG-13, bad boys. That's the title of it? The title of this movie is PG-13, bad boys. And then the poster has a unicorn with Danny DeVito on it. <laughs> and some weird British guy next to him. Uh, yeah, that sounds about right. The world of PG-13, bad guys, and how to find them. Uh, okay, and, uh, basically... Danny DeVito and uh, fucking Mudvayne go out hunting the animals and your big finale of the movie. <gasps> no, no, no. The animals don't escape. The animals don't escape. 
But he is making the zoo have the real animals. But then he finally finds it. He finds his white whale. He finds a chupacabra. And he keeps it, like, locked up. And at this point, despite all of the urgings, all of the urgings of uh, Mudvayne, Danny DeVito's like, I've got him. They're here. Come look at him, kids. Despite all of, all of Danny DeVito's urgings to want to be with the chupacabra. <laughs> okay. Firstly. Secondly. <laughs> secondly. Um... Now the now the zoo is getting more and more attention because it's like there's no way this can be disproven. These animals are real. Oh my, it's amazing. And um, <clears throat> then all of a sudden, like Danny DeVito's walking by and he looks at the chupacabra, this animal that he's loved and wanted for so long, and he sees people like looking at it like you're a freak. Fuck you. You're not beautiful like a unicorn. You're not like mysterious like Nessie. You're just some weird little punk. And he looks in, and it's a baby chupacabra, and the baby chupacabra is crying. And in that moment, Danny DeVito is like, "Wow, maybe I did fuck up." I've, I've you think I've... this is obviously a sentient <laughs> creature that understands human speech. What the fuck are you doing? No, no, the best part. No, this is actually written in the script. It's Danny DeVito under his breath. Well, maybe I did fuck up. And then from behind him, you just hear, Yeah, you fucking think so? <laughs> you think this is what happens, right? Um, and This then... is only an extended lesson for you. Yeah, that's what I do. <laughs> I and then, he, then it's revealed that he's, uh, that he's fucking, oh, what was his name? Gizmo from the Flintstones? What was his name? Oh, the, the great green gazoo. alien dude? Gonzo, whatever. <laughs> the great gazoo. The Great Kazoo. He's just like, I hope you've learned your lesson, Danny. Woo! <laughs> um, and then your uh, your finale of the whole movie is the Mama Chupacabra attacks, and um, basically is like, where the fuck's my baby? She's killing people, cause you know, fuck it, right? Actually, no, wait. If I remember correctly, this is in fact PG thirteen bad boys, meaning yeah. that uh, she doesn't kill people, but she does severely wound them, and. Danny DeVito, like, there, uh, for some reason, oh, no, I know, I know what it is. Danny Trejo is about to kill the Chupacabra, and Danny DeVito, no, yeah, Danny DeVito steps in the way, grabs the baby Chupacabra, runs, and he gets winged in the back by Danny Trejo. Trejo's like, I'm about to kill this Chupacabra, at which <laughs> point, Danny DeVito smirks, looks up at him, and goes, turn around. And the mama chupacabra is there and is just about to fucking maul. Now this is a legit murder. Everything else was very implied. This is a straight up killing of Danny Trejo by this giant chupacabra. As long and as you then, do it uh, shadow, it's okay. Uh, yeah, it's all gonna be in shadow. And then it pans back, and Danny DeVito, Danny DeVito has his arms outstretched. He has the chupacabra baby in his hand. The mama chupacabra grabs it, cradles it, flies into the air, and Danny looks around, and his zoo is empty. All of the animals are gone, and in that moment, he thinks, good. And then he looks at Mudvayne, who's logging up next to him in a long trench coat and long curly hair, because that's what every British actor looks like. <laughs> and he just goes, well, time to go find... Find them all and put them, put them in your suitcase. Credits. Bye, dum dum. Bye, dum dum. And then that's that's that sets up a sequel because the sequel is they have to, because you know the whole plot of the movie is the fact that the animals are, the animals are like escaping into the human world and it's like no 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 you have to stay in the mystical plane otherwise things are going wrong. So the whole plot of the movie is returning them to the mystical plane. Now that they've all escaped from the zoo, they have to go find them and return them to the mystical plane. That's two uh, PG-14 yep. bad boys. Okay. okay, a couple of things. Okay. Um, the, original, the original idea of Fantastic Beasts was that like the Fantastic Beasts and human people's all lived in the same place. It yeah. was just a really bad case of like animal relocation gone wrong because okay. like they were all invasive species in the middle of Manhattan. Number two, since when the fuck do chupacabras fly? <laughs> I think a chupacabra could fly. Hold on. Hey, Google. 
<laughs> okay, Google. Can chupacabras fly? Blake, I typed in can chup. What did I get? Can chupacabras fly? fly? And you know what? I have sometimes something from answers.com. Let's <laughs> so see do what I. happens. Answers.com. Um, can chupa. They keep their wings tucked under until they have the need, <laughs> then take and flight. Then take. <laughs> and then take. Oh, no, no, no. If you go, apparently. As if a bat. Off as if a bat. Yeah, a chupacabra is a tiny rat, bat, dog baby. It's disgusting, and I love them. This, this yeah, is see, just wrong. You don't need to make up all these fancy beasts, J.K. Rowling. We got fancy enough beasts on our own. In this, PG-13 bad boys. Once again, what's a fantastic creature that she made up? Like, what? Because all of the ones that she, all of the ones that she wrote down, most of them somebody came up with before her, a long time before her. All right, you know what? Hold on a second. The beasts in Fantastic Beasts. Time to do a Google. <laughs> the first thing is just like, do you know there was a chupacabra in Fantastic Beasts? Like, oh fuck. I guess you're right. <laughs> well, damn. All right, creatures in Fantastic Beasts and how to catch them all. The Pikachu. Like, wait, what? Uh, the Niffler. The fuck is this thing? This thing's hideous. A bow truckle. That's not real. Uh, an irumphrent. What? <laughs> Irumpent. <laughs> oh, he's horrifying. It looks like an elephant got sick and sneezed so hard that his nose ended up on his forehead. Oh, wow. This movie is a really big departure from the actual book. Oh, do you know nothing about the book? Or about the movie? I know nothing about the movie. I know everything about the original book that she released. And this you is see? bullshit. Uh-huh. You see, Blake Tanner? That's why we need to be here to make, mean, one, make JK's vision come true. Yeah. Where the fuck are, like, my Kelpies and shit? The Demi guy is... I can is, fucks um, with that. Oh god, what the fuck is the Demi guys? It's like, it's so close to being cute. Like this thing, oh my god, what is it where it's like almost so almost human enough that it's disturbing? Oh, you mean Th Demi Lovato? Yeah, yeah, exactly, Demi Lovato, right? Yeah. Um, the no, no, Akami? you're talking about the un uh, Uncanny Valley. Oh yeah, this is the Uncanny Valley of cute. This motherfucker, I'm like, oh, he's so close to being cute, but poor thing. Uh, the Mert Lap. It looks uh, like a little old man. It does look like a little old man. Uh, the Billy Wig. Blake? 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 I know the Billy Wig. That's a, that's no. a fun little buzzy boy. Apparently there's a gigantic bird that, nu that Newt, Newt Salamander le lets fly in New York City. And it creates storms by flapping its wings, and it senses danger, and its name is a Thunderbird. Hey. Ah. That's a copyright infringement. My name. <laughs> I have to sue the pants off that J.K. Rowling. I'm gonna have to get my buddy Danny Trejo here. We're gonna have to hunt <laughs> down that bird. So there's only oh one Thunderbird. Oh my god, okay. Most of the names are kind of dumb. This one is called the Swooping Evil, which is a bomb ass name. Uh, I mean, it lacks in originality points, but it gets it. It gets it, it across. It gets the name across. Let's see. There are Graphorns, which look like the T Rex's acne risen brother, and the Nundu, which is a mix between a tiger and a pufferfish, also known as two things that didn't need to be combined. Too bad, we already did it. We already combined these things because we didn't want to put unicorns and the Loch Ness Monster and the Josh Damned Chupacabra in our movie. No, we're gonna put in this fucking freak. And he's gonna get you. He gonna get you. He gonna <laughs> get you, Danny Trejo. You think you could take down a Chupacabra? Wait till you taste the Thunderbird. Now wait, if uh, if okay, if Thunderbird had to voice the Thunderbird and do the call of the Thunderbird, what would it sound like? Okay, hey, 
Good guy. Right. <laughs> good guy. Right. Hey, good guy. Hey. Yeah, that sounds about right. And you know what else sounds about right, Blake Tanner? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that would be uh, patreon.com slash a load of BS. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Patreon.com slash a load of BS is the only website where you can go to support the. You know, I've said it. You know, I've said this for a year now. We've been recording for a year, and I've always said patreon.com is the only website where you can support us. I have totally said that, ignoring the fact that we have a merchandising website and we have a YouTube channel you can support on. But patreon.com is a website where you can go. We didn't, to, we didn't have most of those for last year, so. Yeah, where you can go to support these good BS boys. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. We need some money to help get, keep this show going. I got to pay Blake or else, you know. I mean, Blake, I pay you and a thousand scamolians every week to do this show, and it's insane. <laughs> You're a little the, behind on the last couple of payments, by the way. <laughs> the past, I think the past 12 months of payments. <laughs> um, and uh, that's right, ladies and gentlemen. And all it is is you basically donate monthly, whether that be a dollar, five dollars. You can donate a quarter. We don't give a shit. I would get pumped if anything came in. If they were just like, a dollar, I'd be like, fuck yeah, that person. But we do have some perks for you over there. If you donate any amount, if you're our one cent hero who donates a penny, if you donate $50, it does not matter. Poopsie, no! I'm sorry, I just knocked over my I just knocked over my dinosaur. I was so excited. Um, oh wait, you wanted to say something, Poopsie? Here, hold on, let um, me just rock out Poopsie. Yes, that's right, ladies and gentlemen. I just wanted to talk to you about the perks. The perks over at... Uh, Patreon. Patreon.com slash a load of bees. A load of BS. A load of bees! Everywhere! So, ladies and gentlemen, firstly, if you donate any amount, like this fucker was saying a minute ago, donate any amount, and you will get access to the BS Rev Up. Let me say that again in the microphone. <laughs> Rev Up. That is uh, where uh, Scotty and Blake, those two fuckers come together and they... They make magic, basically. This is where, this is where, this is the cutting room floor of the magic factory known as a load of BS. It's the 30 minutes where they get together, talk some shit, uh, until they have to do this very professional show. You know how professional they are here. And of course, uh, if you donate certain amounts, they have perks as well. Donate a dollar, uh, and you get shouted out every single week, like the Patreon saint herself, Deborah A. Moore. Like Megan Bolden, like Scott Moore. And of course, uh, if you want to go a little bit bigger, you want to go big, go bigger, go home, as they say, uh, you can donate $5 and you'll get weekly motivational videos from Scotty or Blakey just helping you get through your week. And uh, that's always going to be fantastic for you. But if you're, if you're above all of that, and this is a big but, it's a very big but, in fact... You could say it's a big booty, ladies and gentlemen, because donate $30 over at patreon.com slash a load of BS, and you will be one of the many in the B. Yes. Booty box. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, the BS booty box. Every single month, this fucker right here, he makes a brand new t-shirt. In fact, we're going to have one uh, inspired by, what, what were their names? R Rick and Morty. Rock and Marty, Rock and Marty are gonna have. We're gonna have a brand new shirt inspired by them coming out next week. But if you want to be the first to get it, donate thirty dollars over at Patreon.com/slash a load of BS. Jump in the booty box, ladies and gentlemen, and that's only available over at Patreon.com/slash a load of BS. Thank you, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Very good, poopsie. Thank, thank you. Can I stay? Hey, I, no, Poopsie, no. we need you to we need you to go back to producing, oh. okay, buddy? Okay, I'll be over here. I'm producing. <laughs> so Scotty, um, I don't know if you know this, but a lot of people are abuzz about the big fight that's gonna be happening and that's already going to happen by the time this podcast is out. Yeah! <laughs> we really wanted to talk about this. You were just like, Scotty, can we talk about the big fight? And I was like, oh, you mean the big fight that everyone's going to know the result of by the time this podcast is released? Yeah. yeah. That'll work. I mean, I'm just more 
I'm more amazed by the fact that they got this fight. Like they they book this thing just because of the fact that it's like Floyd Money Mayweather, you know, one of the most famous boxers and wife beaters around. Uh, uh, yeah. Um, uh, against the entire country of Ireland. You're damn right. Fuck the Mayweather. The entire nation. <laughs> Hold on, have you legit seen the video of that? It's my favorite thing online. It's just following around a bunch of Irish people. Like a dude is at the subway. Like, all right, uh, yeah, could I get a, a, the Italian sub? All right, thank you very much. Puts the puts the sandwich in his jacket, which felt weird to me in the moment. But I was like, whatever. And he just goes, <laughs> all right, have a good day. Yeah, that's right. Fuck to Mayweather's. Fuck to Mayweather's. <laughs> oh, I believe that nothing has united a country more than their shared hatred of Floyd Mayweather. Well, you know, on Monday, something black blocked out something big and white, so they wanted to return the favor on Saturday. Oh, now now we're getting a little racist. Okay. No, it's that no fuck to Mayweather's. Fuck you, minutes. Blake, Chad. Oh, sorry. Sorry, Blake. It's just very... It was very weird Only took two it's minutes. Just... Oh, hold on. Like, I, I feel something taking over me. Oh, I feel, no. Oh, no. Oh, I just feel... Oh, Blake Satter, how the fuck are you doing? Fuck the fucking Mayweathers. Let me tell you something right now. Now, we are uh -huh. talking about that fucking Mayweather son of a bitch. Are we going to talk about Conor fucking McGregor? I the know. number one fighter of all time. Don't matter where you are, the UFC in a boxing ring. He's going to take his left hand, knock your fucking knock off. Glad to have you back, Conor. How you doing? Doing fucking fantastic. Let me tell you something about that right now. I mean, Put at me this up point, against this. Yeah. Well, at this point, he, the fight is already over, isn't it? Of course, the fight is already over, and you all saw what happened. You all know. You know how fucking fantastic <laughs> it was. I, hold on, wait. There we go. I was wearing glasses for a minute. I don't wear glasses. It was very strange. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Look, let me tell you something. It's fucking Monday. I saw an eclipse. I saw something getting in front of the big bright white thing. Just stepped in his fucking way. If fucking Mayweather tries that shit on me on Saturday, I'll knock his ass right out. I'll tell you that right now. He wants to try to <laughs> eclipse me. Nothing can eclipse the fucking Mayweather. I'll tell you that. I bought my baby a suit. I bought <laughs> a child in a suit. suit. <laughs> I put a child in a suit. I don't know why. I just did it. Uh, my my biggest question about that is why you didn't get a, just a smaller version of the suit that you wear that has the little, just like in small print in uh, pinstripes, just fuck you. All right, look here. That's a fucking child. That's my baby you're talking about. Having him have fuck you all over him. I'm raising him right. Hold on. Shut the fuck up. I'm trying to record. Sorry about that. The baby kept fucking acting up. It's a bullshit. Oh. Understandable. Exactly. All right. Any more questions from you? I hope you got some more because Scotty oh. can't do a Mayweather impression. <laughs> We're not going to bring that fucker in. No. Oh, one of, one of my biggest things is what was going what was going through your mind during the fight? What what were you thinking when things opened up and it was just this dramatic? The fight was over in twelve seconds. Now look, let me tell you something right now. When I go into a fight, my mind it's fucking psychic, psychic energy. You eliminate all the thoughts from your mind and you just focus on becoming a caged animal in there. And so nothing's going through my mind. But I'll tell you something. The only thing that went through fucking Mayweather's mind was my fucking left fist clogging him up the side of his skull. Fuck the Mayweather's! <laughs> uh, fuck the Mayweather's indeed. Thank you, sir. Um, <laughs> uh, another thing is, did you really, really, really think that you would get this outcome from the match? Uh, oh, was it from day no. one? Oh, from day one, I knew this outcome was going to happen. I knew I was going to pull off the greatest upset victory in boxing history by uh -huh. defeating losing to <laughs> by having something happen in this match uh obviously of course 
the competitor. Still a little bit woozy, still a little, you know. That's right, ladies and bit gentlemen. Of... Oh, what's up, dudes? How you doing? Oh, get the fuck out of here. Oh my god, ladies and gentlemen. What? It's Floyd Money Mayweather as played by Jack Black because I can't do a Mayweather impression. <laughs> what's up, guy? Yeah, that's right. After last night's fight, looking a little mm, arrogant. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what the fuck is this, Duke? This is my best friend in the whole world, Blake Tanner. Me and him are having a little interview after what happened in the fight last night. Oh, okay, whatever. Because I'm here for revenge in an epic rock battle. Do, figure, do, 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 do. Mama said, knock you out. Don't even start with me right now. This I think we've broken Blake Tanner at this point. Oh wait, what? What's that music? What in the blue hell's going on in here? These two sons of bitches sitting in here trying to talk to Blake Tanner. There's only one man who sits. Who's a badass enough to talk to Blake Tanner, and it's none of these two sons of bitches. Oh my god, Sound Cold Steve Austin is here too. My god. What's going on? <laughs> oh. this, is, this is my talk show. What happened to it? Look, it doesn't matter. I'm here. I'm victorious. You know what's happened. Mm, dude, that remains to be seen. You know, I'm just saying, I'm, I'm Mayweather from two days ago, so I have no idea what's going on. No big deal. All right, both of you two need to calm your damn asses up. So, let me get this straight. In the studio with me, just, just, we have Connor fucking McGregor. That's right. Get the middle name correct. It's Connor yeah. fucking McGregor. Fucking McGregor. Um, we have... Franklin Currency Merwether. Wait, what? Oh. Um, uh, yeah, that's right, dude. Say the full name. Mm, Franklin Currency Mayweather. Skiddy. <laughs> yep, you got yep, that money play. maker. So let about the that's Benjamins. That's played by Jack Black. Play, yeah, and we have Stone Cold Steve Austin. You're damn right Stone Cold is here. When this meeting of a minds of two sons of bitches like this happens, Stone Cold's got to be here. Stone Cold's got to lay down law. And Stone Cold's got to stand, oh, like a butterfly, sting like a bee. Oh, my oh, God, it's Lord, Muhammad no. Ali as performed by Christopher Walken. Oh, you stop God, in the ring. No. no one stops to Ali. Let me tell you, it's fantastic. This talk show is Chris, fun. Muhammad Ali is dead. What are you doing? No, he's not. The spirit of Muhammad Ali is here. He's in me. Oh, now, let no. me just calmly look up Muhammad Ali quotes. Oh. <laughs> 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 Admittedly, I didn't have enough for this bullshit segment as I thought. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Let's let's see some good Muhammad Ali quotes. Float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. That's it. That's all I've got. Oh, I'm an hour removed from the last drink that I had, and I'm just losing it at this point. What's your problem, big man? Let me put it. My last drink was about five seconds ago, and I've already sobered my ass up. Somebody toss yep. me another beer or this glass of damn water, because I'm this segment's making my fucking voice hurt. <laughs> oh hell no oh hell um, yeah they just tossed me a couple of those broken skull ipas we're gonna get this down we're gonna right talk about this broken fight. skull ipas that is a nice refreshing beverage out there ladies and gentlemen and All right. uh, is there anyone else blake would you like to interview anyone else <laughs> no i would like to go back to our original dudes please for the love of god and ask uh -huh. Who each of them thinks would do better in the octagon as opposed to a boxing ring. Oh, oh, you said the original dudes. Okay. Hello, Blake Tanner. Oh. It's me. It's me, Daniel Mudvayne, star of PG-13 Bad Boys. And uh, I'm your original guy here. And let me tell you something. If I stepped into the octagon across from Danny DeVito, it'd be amazing. Flying off. Hey, I'm, I'm Danny DeVito. 
know what? Oh, hey, how you doing, Danny? Oh, wait, no. Hey. Now, the, now the real original boy is here. It's me, Ghostbusting Mother. <laughs> <laughs> this is like the royal rumble of dumb shit we've done in this episode. <laughs> They're all it's just like out. 10, 9, 8, 7, 5, 4, 3, 2, woo! No, oh. Rick, please! No. Oh, wait, we got another one coming in. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey, hey. 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 Hey, duck guy. Hey, thunder oh my bird God. in the house. Oh my God, the countdown's beginning, and then all of a sudden, hey, man, it's the racist Jamaican Uber driver Scotty at that one time. What's up, gang? <laughs> oh my God. Hey, man, do you want to see Blake faces Jamaican pirate man? <laughs> there's Blake, there's <laughs> Jamaican pirate Blake. Oh, Jesus, what? <laughs> this is like the gimmick battle royal of BS. <laughs> oh wait, hold on. And then of course coming in at number 30. D D D Hello ladies oh, oh. and gentlemen. It's me, Momoa Curry. And if you want to know who wins between Connor Mayweather and <laughs> and Money McGregor, <laughs> my bet's on me, Momoa Curry. The god of law, the god of the ocean, the god of predictions, the god of boxing, and the god of pirate ships, and the <laughs> god of please stop me, please. <laughs> so, I guess, I guess it's fine now, we can just spoil the whole damn thing, because Momoa Curry goes in, he does a run-in, and knocks both the dudes out. Uh, I'm glad that right. you came on and finally wrapped this whole storyline up, Momoa, because yeah, it was that... getting a little out of hand. Are you saying that it was a bit contrived what was going on in here? Big man, let me tell you, it got a little bit confusing. All right, nothing's confusing for old Money Mayweather. Skin to you, ladies and gentlemen. Whoa, I'll box him, I'll fight him. That's whatever. I'll do whatever it takes. Now listen here, all y'all sons of bitches need to shut the hell up. I'm so confused, but all I can think is fuck to Mayweather. <laughs> Jesus. Christ. I Good did it. Hey. Hey. I'm and sorry. I only did one no, I like to think so, he's, uh, he's like yeah. at the end of the movie, sweeping across the stage like, ah, wasn't that good of a match uh, anyways. Uh, oh, I Jesus. I was flying over that because I'm the Thunderbird. There's that I've actually bird. evolved past my human form. I am just the Thunderbird now. I'm a, I'm a bird. Kaka. Kaka. Hi. Hey. Oh jeez, okay. there a lot just happened. <laughs> a lot uh, just happened at once. Coochie, coochie, Thank you for coochie, tuning coochie. into the first annual BS gimmick battle royal where I think Momoa took them all out at the end. Momoa just stepped in the ring and was like, Back off, bitches. I'm one of the only characters who's crossed over to all of their podcasts. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's one of the only characters that has done a competent thing on this podcast. <laughs> exactly. Beard. He saved us. In episode 10. <laughs> Episodes ago. Yeah. That was, Momoa saving us was a long time ago. He's kind of... Who knows? Well, Blake Tanner, what did you learn this week? Um... <laughs> I learned that you should never put Danny DeVito and, um... Fucking Danny Dumbledore 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 Redvane Redvane Dumbledore Dumbledore into a gimmick battle royal because it doesn't matter Momoa wins um and I learned <laughs> that um pitching stories is fun when you have them fully fleshed out as opposed to just being like hey dude uh zoo cause this time I was like oh cool I can actually just do this whole thing and it'd be a segment awesome uh, so, Blake Tanner, where can they find you? Uh, you can find me at Blake A. Tanner on Twitter. I do video game videos with the videos on YouTube at the Darkroom Vidya. That's the Darkroom, V-I-D-Y-A, playing through video games. And Scotty does other video games on the BS YouTube channel that I should probably do video games on, too. You really should at this point. I can't wait for people to be like, what does BS stand for? I'm like, Blake and Scotty. 
Who the fuck is Blake? Sorry, he's just not around a lot. It's, he lives far away. I'm sorry, guys. Uh, and you can find yeah, me at Scott. The... Go on. Yeah, listen to the flagship. This is the flagship. This is the flagship. The three-hour running, longest-running episodic television series. The flagship <laughs> show of the WWE. Load of BS. Uh, and you can find me on Twitter at a load of pure BS. Nope. And you can find me on Twitter at Scotty Mo. That's S C O T T Y E M O. You can buy my book on Amazon. That's called Queasel Corp. Q U E Z A L C O R P. Make sure to check out the Queasel Corp podcast over at a load of pure BS.com. That's also where you can find all of the great BS network programs, whether that be bad examples, uh, Scotch, Talk, Scotch Talk, all the stuff I do on our YouTube channel, or whether that be our podcasts, Fight Boys, the Queasel Corp podcast, this one. I think we've actually got a few other ones coming down the pipeline so be sure to stay tuned to check that out ladies and gentlemen and as always ladies and gentlemen you can find us at a load of pure bs.com you can buy our merch at merch.aloadofpurebs.com find us on facebook donate to the patreon subscribe on youtube and remember, ladies and gentlemen, you can find both of us on Twitter at a load of pure BS, except no substitutes, and we will see you next week.